Ladies and gentlemen, our host for this evening, Mr. Sidney Powell. Yeah! score for a, a motion picture is a very, very complicated and delicate piece of art. Uh, it has to perform many functions, some obvious and some not quite so obvious. It's, in a sense, it's the, the final rewrite of the picture. It's sort of the last stage that happens in the shaping of it. It's one of the most concentrated, and oddly enough, it's the only one where one seldom gets a chance to do it over again. Uh, when we write a film, we get to rewrite the script as often as necessary. We rewrite scenes constantly. While we're shooting, we do take two, take five, take ten, sometimes take twenty and thirty. Uh, we edit till we get it right. And then the composer comes in and gets one shot at doing it right. Because the score is often the thing that helps to make everything else work, and because it comes precisely where it does, right at the end of the process. And because it makes such a major contribution to the effect of a film, it's a very, very heightened time. Of all the phases of filmmaking, there is none that concentrates quite so much excitement into such a short, short period of time. I've, uh, I've been practicing directing for about 24 years now, and I've gotten to the point where I can, I can be fairly calm and collected on the set, or at least I can pretend that I am, but I always sort of lose it in the scoring stage because I think what goes on there is just so really magical. It's, it's kind of embarrassing to stand there in front of a group of grown men and start to sob at your own picture because somebody's played this gorgeous piece of music that really tears your heart out. It's, it's on the scoring stage, for me anyway, the film stops being home movies and starts to really look like an actually releasable motion picture. There's some kind of alchemy that takes place and I've always really found it magic. It's a combination of elements that really illuminates what's on the screen and speaks to you so directly, and right, right directly to the emotions. The, the film composer's job is, is a multifarious job. And one of the things that he has to do is kind of x-ray the motion picture, if you will, and get to the bones of it, to sort of, to sort of psychoanalyze it and then translate that to the audience, to draw you a kind of road map through it. And added to that, there's also the terrible task of trying to understand precisely what the filmmaker's point of view was. Now, the, most of us who direct films are not technically adept at all as musicians, so the body English is pretty extraordinary when you're trying to describe some complex set of emotions that you feel and you have no technical way to do it. You sort of kind of wiggle and grunt and make sounds and then they go away and come back with a beautiful piece of music. Uh, it's, it's wild. It's not, it's not terribly popular to admit it, but quite often what the composer brings back is it makes what you've done transcend itself. It makes it much, much more than you ever intended. And we've all heard about it in pictures that have been uh, saved by the score. I'm not going to talk about that. But, uh, we are uh, we're in a business that has no entrance exams. Uh, nobody's devised a, a really definitive test of, of a director's skill or an actor's skill or a writer's skill. It's a little bit like Mel Brooks said, you put your hand on a rock, you say, I am a director, and if somebody's dumb enough to give you a job for that length of time, you're a director. It's, uh, it's not so with a musician, particularly a film composer. These gentlemen tonight possess a degree of, of skill and craft that, uh, that I find absolutely awesome. Uh, the statement film is a collaborative art is, is overused and it's, it's a cliche, but nowhere is it more true than with music and film. The score plugs the holes that we left. It, it provides poetry, whimsy, heroism, romance, tension, curiosity, humor and ambiguity. It tells us when everything's okay, it tells us when everything's not okay. The style of film music has changed over the past 20 years, but its purpose and function never has. And if anything, its importance has increased. The first half of tonight's program features work by William Kraft, David Raxon, and Tom Scott. You've heard Mr. Kraft's piece, 
Mr. Kraft is the Los Angeles Philharmonic Composer in Residence and Director of the Performing Arm for Contemporary Music, the New Music Group. His original compositions have been twice nominated for Pulitzer Prizes, once in 65 and again in 1972. He's received two Guggenheim Fellowships, two Ford Foundation Commissions, grants from the Rockefeller Foundation and the National Endowment for the Arts, among many others. Tonight he conducted his suite from Fire and Ice. David Raxon, who's up next, began his film career by orchestrating Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times. He's become one of our most prominent film composers, and he counts over 100 films to his credit. His theme from Laura is one of the most often recorded pieces in recording history. It's also one of the most beautiful and haunting. Some of his other scores are Forever Amber, Force of Evil, The Secret Life of Walter, Many Separate Tables, The Bad, The Beautiful, and Carrie. Jack Elliott will conduct Mr. Raxon, Raxon's suite from Forever Amber. Tom Scott's unique saxophone has been heard by almost all of us on everything from pop to rock and jazz. He's an accomplished arranger and band leader as well as being a composer. He's composed scores for both television and film. He's played as a sideman with George Harrison, Paul McCartney, Robbie Shanker, Joan Baez, Buddy Rich, and as a leader, he's made dozens of albums. He'll be guest artist this evening on his own composition, Sweet from Hanky Panky, conducted by his father, Nathan Scott, who himself has over 600 television programs and over 100 films to his credit. There'll be a brief intermission, and then I'll be back to tell you about uh, the second half of tonight's program. Enjoy. Thank you.